method to solve this problem is as follows. Okay, so what we'll do is to say pre one is going to say that x equals to some value k. Okay, I don't know what it is, but I know it has to have a specific value in order for post two to become x equals thirty. Okay. In other words, at this point, I'm just looking into this, you know, this code here and ask myself, what is the overall effect of these two lines of code? Okay, and I just use you know, a constant k to represent the initial value of x. I don't know what it should be, but I want to relate x, the x final value, to its initial value, which is k. Okay, and that's why I make this little assumption here. Then I would just go through the pre-post condition thing, you know, as usual. Okay, so I would say the right-hand side of line one refers to the left-hand side, and the right-hand side, which I will call f of x equals x plus one, has an inverse of f prime of x, which is x minus one. I'm just combining the two steps onto one single line to save time. Is that okay so far? Basic, you know, usual stuff. <clears throat> so we can use the substitution rule. So by applying the substitution rule, post one equals to the substitution rule applied to pre one. We find all occurrences of x because x is the variable being changed by the assignment statement, and replace each occurrence with f prime of x, which is the inverse function. Okay. Then we carry out this operation. Pre one is x equals k, and oops. X equals k is the precondition. We try to find all occurrences of x and replace every single occurrence of x with x minus one. And in the next step, I just carry out the actual substitution. Since we mentioned x in x equals k, that x has to be replaced by x minus one, just like that. Or if you prefer to simplify it even more, or move the one to the other side, that's fine. Are we okay so far? Okay. So the next step is pretty much the same thing. We can say pre two equals post one because they are in a sequence. They're right next to each other, <clears throat> and then the same thing applies. The right hand side of line two, oops, refers to the left hand side. And the right-hand side, in this case, I would pick a different letter just so that I don't use reuse you know f for the same for a different function. So I would I would use you know g of x here is five x, or if you want to spell out you know x times five, that's good too. And it also has an inverse. What is the inverse of g of x? X, x divided by five. Very good. Okay. So now. You know, we can say use the substitution rule, and we apply the substitution rule. You know, the first part is completely mechanical. You just look up the definition of what the substitution rule is supposed to do. Post two equals to computer is okay. Post two equals to the result of a substitution operation based on pre two. We find occurrences of the variable to the left hand side, which is x. And replace every single one of those occurrences with g prime applied to x, just like that. Okay. And then the next step is to expand pre two and also g prime of x. Pre two is x equals k plus one, right? And we find occurrences of x. What is g prime of x? Well, g prime of x is just x divided by five. Is that making sense so far? So after the substitution, what is going to happen? Well, since the original expression, the original precondition, only mentions x once, we'll just have to replace that one single instance of x with x divided by five, and that equals to x k plus one. Is that okay? Does everybody can everybody see how the substitution operation is applied? <clears throat> okay. So at this point, we can also do some simplifications. You can basically just say that you know x, you know, is the same as five times k plus one in parentheses. 
Okay. Do we have any questions at this point? Okay. Now, if you look at the results I have up to this point, does this conclusion here, x equals 5 times k plus 1, does this conclusion depend on the value of, a, of k? Does k have to be like greater than 5, less than 6, less than you know, negative 3? Do I, do I need any restrictions on k? No. I can pick any k, and this is how the final value of x after line 2 is going to relate to the original value of x. Is that making any sense? So in the question, what is 5 times k plus 1? It's 30. Okay. So in this specific case, we know that pose 2 is stating that x equals to 30. This means 30 equals to 5 times k plus 1. Solve for k. Okay. Is, does, does everybody feel comfortable solving for k in equations like this? Okay. Very good. The first step is to say, okay, since we're multiplying this by 5 and k is inside this mess here, we want to get rid of, you know, multiply by 5. And the easiest way to get rid of multiply by 5 is to divide both sides by 5. So you have 6 on one side and you only have k plus 1 on the other side. K plus one, you know, still has a little bit, it's still not very clean. We want just having K on one side. So you subtract one from both sides, then, then you have K on one side, and you have six minus one on the other side, which, you know, then you can solve and say K equals to five. So that's why, you know, pre and post conditions can be useful too, because if you know the value of a variable after a certain line, and the steps are all undoable, you can actually just jump a few steps back and say, I know that this variable must have started with this value on this line. Yep? So the only way that's useful on a question like that is to actually go through and explain all the pre and post conditions? Mm, that's not what I said. You know, I said that you can actually just use you know, regular English reasoning and mention about the same thing. In other words, in this case, you can say that since we know after we multiply x by 5, x will have a value of 30. That means x must have a value of 6 before we carry out line 2. But only something like this is where we can use actual reasoning. That is correct, because we have not really gone through these mechanisms in the class, you know, not counting today. <clears throat> Are you guys okay? You know, is that fine? Okay. So that's basically you know, the three types of questions that I think you know I'll be asking. You know, mostly you know traces. I will most likely give you you know two at least two questions on traces, because trace questions are easy. Okay, as long as long as you understand the mechanisms, you know tracing an algorithm is nothing more than just blindly following the procedures and go. Okay, I see this. I do this. I see this. I do this. I see this. I do this. Yep. Down like this. <clears throat> so I'll give you probably t at least two traces. Um, you know, each one would not be too long. They might have nesting statements, okay, nested statements, which means you know I might give you a conditional statement that is including a while loop, or a while loop including a conditional statement, you know, something along that line. Um, but in terms of the number of lines that you have to go through to trace it, it won't be very long. Okay, I just want to under I want to check to see if you you understand how to do it. I don't need you to do it really, really fast. Because in order to execute program really fast, what do you use? Computers, right? <laughs> we do have to understand how the computer does it, but we don't have to do it as quickly as a computer can. Okay, so any questions about the, the practice test at this point? How many questions total? You said there'd be at least two traces. There'll be at least two traces. And I would probably just give you one uh, forward pre and post condition. But since we have talked about conditional statements in the context of pre and post conditions, you can almost count on the fact that there will be one, you know, the, the pre and post condition one will be based on you know, both assignment statements and conditional statements. 
So you definitely want to brush up, you know, and, uh, and understand how to derive the pre and post conditions of conditional statements. Um, and then there'll be one that looks kind of like this, okay? I might decide to also, you know, make a question like this, but give it a twist. In other words, I will give you the result of after, of, of a, I will give you the result of a conditional statement. And then you guys can tell me, based on the result of the conditional statement, what do we know about the variable before the conditional statement? So that's just kind of add a little twist to the whole thing, but it does, you know, test whether you understand the pre and post condition thing. And remember, when we are going backwards, if I give you a post condition and you have to tell me what the precondition is, you do not have to use rigorous, uh, rig rigorous mathematics. You can just, you know, use your, you know, reasoning. Just explain your reasoning along the way. But you, it does have to be step by step. Okay, one step has to connect to another step, to the next step. Okay. It is open book, open notes. You know, it's basically anything that is either handwritten or printed prior to the test is fine. Of course, there won't be any exchanging of material written during the test among you yourselves. Because <laughs> I know someone's thinking, oh, printed or written hand material, uh, written handwritten material. So if I write something on a piece of paper, can I pass it to my neighbor during the test? The answer is no, because that would be live communication. <laughs> so all cell phones, you know, have to be turned off, you know, during the test. You know, I would, you know, I, I really don't want to have to suspect anyone of doing something wrong, so the best way to do it is just to turn off the cell phones and not use them. I know sometimes you, know, you, you want to see you know, who is messaging you, you know, oh, after the test you want to go to you know, sushi or whatever, right? I mean, but let's, let's try not to do that so I don't have any reason to suspect anything, okay? Um, obvious stuff, okay, you know, you know uh, I don't want to see anyone looking at the paper of a neighbor now, it, this class is really packed, which means you know I cannot you know just have you guys you know space out so that you know you guys will be so far away from the next you know person that it will be there won't be any suspicion whatsoever. So just you know try to avoid doing you know suspicious stuff. If you want to know the time, ask me. Okay, no, don't try to look at at, at the watch of your neighbor, particularly the neighbor who's behind you. Okay, I have that I have had that happen once. Okay, in one of my classes, I think it was a Pascal class, you know, but during the test, this is like during the test, that person turned around and looked at the paper of the person behind. Well, you know, I think that definitely is suspicious, don't you think? So I, I said, you know, so in the class, you know, I said, you know, please only look at your own paper and not your neighbor's paper, and that person did it again. <laughs> So I don't know what you know. I don't. I, I, I don't know what happened in that case. You know why that person would be doing that. Hmm? Hmm? That person, for some reason, you know, was going to get a zero anyway. <laughs> I, did, I did not have to you know, carry out you know, any dis disciplinary you know action. You know, she was getting a zero anyway. Was which was you know just kind of it was strange. It was weird. Okay. Now the other thing is, you know, because we only have so much space on your desk, if you bring in like this much, this many books and notes and whatnot, there won't be enough space for you to spread it out. So you got to make sure that it is, you know, kind of condensed and concise. Yep. Sure. Now for those of you, you know, who do not have access to a printer, um, if it is something that I have, you know, I can print it out. If it's not too much, I can just you know say okay, we'll just I'll just print it out for you. If it is too much, like if you have your two hundred pages to print, I'll just charge you by the cost. Okay, <laughs> instead of ten cents per page that you know, the library or other labs will be charging you, I'll just be charging by by the cost.